The Soul Warrior might be a boss? He might actually just be a stronger variety of enemy, like the Moss Knights or the Mushroom Ogres, but I'm like 99% sure that the game considers him a boss fight, so let's do this. If he is just a strong enemy, he's the only one with more than two attacks. He's got the Dash and Slash, the Descending Slash, and the Soul Ball. And our old enemy, Walking Forwards. The Dash and Slash is basically another lunge, with the extremely small distinction that it can be parried. But I don't know why you'd bother when jumping over his head and nail pogoing works so delightfully well. The Soul Warrior can feel a bit like fighting a single Mantis Lord, since his attacks are rather similar. But the most important distinction is that he can do multiple attacks in between teleports, so he's a little less predictable. The Descending Slash is probably the trickiest, giving you the least amount of time to dodge out of the three, and having a decently wide hitbox on the Landing Slash. I'd recommend just being quick on the trigger with your dashes and getting out from beneath him as fast as you can when you see him appear above you. Now this is an attack that you can absolutely parry. The normally strict timing is super easy to judge here. If you press the button the moment he lands, you'll nail the parry window just fine. No worries if you don't want to try it though. Just stay out of the way until after he's slashed, and then close in for an attack. The Soul Orb is a first for us, a homing projectile. While not particularly common among most of the game's enemies, this is absolutely the sort of attack that we want to know how to dodge consistently. Note that its turning radius is extremely wide, so you always want to get behind it and give yourself the best chance of avoiding it. After it's fired, the orb will either remain on screen for a few seconds, or until it hits the surface. The easiest way to get it off the field is to lure it into the ground, so basically it goes like this. Jump over the initial firing of the orb to get in an attack on the Soul Warrior, then double back underneath the orb as it makes its return to lure it into the ground. As for his variety of walking forwards, this one's actually a lot less threatening than Hornet's for one major reason. He is a lot more susceptible to knockback. Generally speaking, you should only get hit by this if you're right up in his face and also, for some reason, not attacking him. Just to be safe though, it is smart to take a step backwards between each attack that you land on him. His AI tells him not to walk into the spot that the knight is in, but it seems like that's not a very high priority protocol for him to follow, so it can happen. As for our game plan, the Soul Warrior is simple enough that we actually have a few options. Here are the important things to know. Both his dash and slash and his soul orb are highly telegraphed, so as long as he remains on the ground, you can wail on him pretty safely. Just remember to jump every time you see him wind up or spawn on the ground, and you'll dodge these attacks no problem. His little scuttling walk can, of course, complicate things a little, but as I said, just take a step back between all of your strikes if you're worried about it. You may be thinking that since his attacks are so easy to avoid while airborne, and he has no attacks which involve him jumping or attacking above him, that nail pogoing should be our go-to strategy, and yeah, it's definitely an option. Even his descending slash starts higher up while we're in midair, so it's just as easy to dodge. The only caveat is that he moves around a lot, and staying on top of him can be tricky, but it could definitely be worth it. But let's just say you try it and you take a lot of undue damage. Where are you gonna heal? That's where things get difficult. He's not that fast, but he definitely attacks frequently enough that it can seem like healing's not an option. There is a window of opportunity right after he uses a descending slash though, as this attack tends to have the most cooldown. There's only time for one mask though, don't get greedy. Not that any of that is likely to be an issue though. With only 180 health and our newly upgraded nail, this guy's only gonna take 20 hits. So let's count him down. And within we find a boss we've already fought before. Hmm. And not a dream rematch either. This one is more of just a simple iteration. No changes in frame data or anything like that. But his stats will be changed slightly. So introducing the abbreviated bio. I'll be using this whenever we come across a, uh, a new version of a previous boss that isn't the same as a dream rematch. So he is probably one of the most extreme ones here. This soul warrior has more HP and another attack, the ability to summon these follies. What's funny is that basically that makes him a far, far easier version of the lost kin. Nothing really to worry about from that guy. And the Soul Warrior! This is how I knew he's a boss, because he's here! He's here in God Home! He counts! He's not just a regular enemy. Now what's really cool about the Soul Warrior is now that we have the Shade Cloak, these Soul Orbs that he fires at us 
we can just destroy those by shade cloaking through us. No need to kite them around and push them into the ground like we used to. We can just destroy them. In fact, there is basically no need to ever jump in this fight now that we have the shade cloak. We can counter everything he does with it very, very easily. Now for Ascended, we do have some slightly different uh, changes. Once again, like with the one we fought uh, guarding the yikes, the, um, the Shade Soul, this one summons Follies, which does make things significantly more complicated. We can no longer uh, fight this entire fight quite as easily by just staying grounded and Shade Souling exclusively through the uh, through the Soul Warrior, but just like with the ouch with the uh, the broken vessel and and all before, try and prioritize the follies that he summons, and it shouldn't take too much longer. Now that was pretty clumsy for an ascended fight, so let's see how we do on Radiant. Now in this fight, since we are shade cloaking so often. Uh, it could be a smart idea to go ahead and equip Sharp Shadow. Get some cheeky extra damage in while dashing through him. But, not at all necessary of course, and I still am not overly fond of that charm. But, to put it simply, being able to coincide an attack against uh, the Folly- Whoa, 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 that was close. Being able to coincide an attack against the Folly and the guy is pretty nice. I don't recommend using too many spells on this fight. He says using a spell. That's that one. Alright, thanks for watching Boss Blitz. As per usual, check out the playlist in the top left if you're curious about anything else Hollow Knight related. Next up is the Soul Master.